All right, <clears throat> human beings, welcome. My name is Miss S. For those of you who don't know me, this is the 2015 SOL. It is on solpass.org. It will be on Canvas for you to take and kind of work yourself through. I'm going to be going over the answers so that after you take it, if you have any questions, you can watch this video and kind of have all the resources in your hands. Here we go. So we haven't gone over a ton of laboratory safety practices just because we weren't in person um, doing labs. But basically, anytime you see a laboratory safety or laboratory um, question, think about common sense. So this person is in choice A is just kind of swing using one hand no no goggles no lab coat or apron no gloves sort of things so that's an automatic no b is wearing goggles but no apron he's wearing gloves but he's still only carrying the tub with one hand so that's nope c is good except oh he has open-toed shoes which is not good he does have his gloves he's carrying two hands and an apron but he does not have the goggles so choice D would be the answer here because we have goggles, safety goggles, safety gloves, safety apron, closed toed shoes, and he's carrying things with both hands. All right, so in this experiment, you are looking for, to identify the variables and the constants. The constants are always what's gonna be the same. So immediately you should be able to figure out that the amount of water and the temperature are the same number going down. Those are going to be your constants. And then the temperature of the water and the amount of sugar dissolved are the variables because they are what is changing. Okay, and then we have this Punnett square. We've got our two heterozygotes. So what's the expected result? We have two homozygous and two heterozygous. We have two, we have a big R, big R, big R, little r, big R, little r, and two little r's. So anything that has a big R in it, since the red flower color is dominant, is going to be red. Okay, so we have three that have big R in them. So that means 75% is red, 25% is white. That means B is the correct answer. All right, phases of mitosis. We have PMAT, that's what we're looking for here. Interphase is first, that's kind of when things are forming. Okay, and then we've got P PMAT. We have prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. Prophase is right here, is when things are kind of starting to go in there. The, the fibers, spindle fibers are forming, things are happening. Then we have metaphase, which is the, they line up in the middle. We've got anaphase, they're starting to pull apart to opposite sides, and telophase and cytokinesis, which is when they are full, like starting to form two separate cells. PMAT, mitosis, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase. So when we're looking at a new species, you're going to want to look at its ecological niche or the role that this species has in its ecosystem. This encompasses what it eats, who it mates with, how it survives in this environment, and how it interacts with other species and other populations and things in the environment. So now we're looking at this population growth curve for it to continue increasing. It is going to need unlimited resources, which is not realistic, right? Any environment that anybody lives in, there's going to be a limit of resources. So a real life curve, population growth curve would either go up and then come back down if it was going extinct, or it looked like an S when it would reach carrying capacity. So Rosalind Franklin. Okay, so she is the one who took x-ray pictures. So anything you think of with Rosalind Franklin, she created the image that showed the shape of the DNA molecule. So we have our functions. Um, the brain or the control of functions would be the nucleus. The site for gas exchange or the gills would be, the comparison in a cell would be the cell membrane controls what goes in and out. The waste storage or the bladder would be the vacuole. And then the movement or the fins and tail would be the flagellum. 
Okay, so then Darwin's explanation for evolution, it depends on the existence of variations in a population. Variation has to exist. And then we have, anytime you think of fossils or aging fossils, um, reproductive strategy doesn't matter if you're just looking at a fossil, right? Physical traits kind of matter, but that's not going to help you age it. Same with genetic makeup. You're looking for those radioactive isotopes. So now we have this statement, which is an if-then statement. If plants are added to an indoor environment, then the air quality will improve. This is an educated guess or a hypothesis. And then we have germ theory disease. Which of these is a result from the general acceptance that microorganisms cause disease? So if you think about we have microorganisms, they cause disease. Which one of these is going to indicate um, a response to that? And that is going to be the development and use of antibiotics. Spontaneous generation and supernatural causes doesn't really make sense. The link between viruses and RNA, yeah, but that doesn't really have, um, that's not the direct result from microorganisms cause disease. The first thought would be, okay, how can we prevent or try to prevent diseases from happening and people getting sick. Okay, so we have these warbler and juniper trees. We have warblers are the dark color and juniper trees are the light color. What conclusion the biologists make from the data shown? So again, anytime you have a question like this, definitely do process of elimination. Just work your way through Okay, so the juniper tree population increases, the golden cheek warbler population increases. That is not true because when the juniper tree increases, the warblers increase and then decrease again. Optimum habitat for golden cheeked warblers is 100 juniper trees per acre. You want to look at number per acre. Uh, maybe, could be right. We'll hold off on that one. And then here I'm going to exit out so we can see it better. The golden cheek warbler, warbler, warbler population stabilizes when the juniper tree population increases above 120 degrees or 120. No, that's not true. So this needs to go up here. I copied and pasted wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, and then we have golden cheek warbler population is un unable to survive if juniper trees are present. That's obviously not true, right? Because we have warblers present when there are trees. So the correct answer for this one would be B. The optimum habitat for golden cheeked warbler, warbler population is 100 juniper trees per acre. The most amount of warblers occurs when there's 100 trees per acre. There we go. Okay, let's go back to present mode. Okay, so we have history of the camel, studying the differences. Um, why do we study the differences? Okay, we do that to see how organisms evolve over time. We, that's how we look at, that's how we study evolution is looking at differences in similar species and different species. Anytime there's a change over time, think evolution. So then we have an unknown organism. We've got a nucleus, a mitochondria, it's multicellular. Okay, so we know now that it's not you bacteria. Cells grow in columns, cell wall made of chitin, which is not plants or animals because it has cell walls. It's a decomposer. This is fungi, okay? Anytime you see decomposer, fungi. Cell wall made of chitin is fungi, okay? Plants have cell walls, but the fungi cell walls are made of chitin. Chitin. Excuse me. Okay, so we have an energy graph. What can be concluded from this graph? Again, anytime you're looking at a graph, process of elimination, okay? The reactants have less energy than the products. They actually have more energy, so that's not true. The enzyme is consumed during the course of the reaction. We know that's not true. Enzymes are not consumed. The enzyme lowers the activation energy for the reaction. That is true. The amount of free energy produced in the reaction increases with an enzyme. Change in free energy. Nope. So this is the correct answer. C. The enzyme lowers the energy activation. 
activation energy. That's always what an enzyme does. If you see anything that an enzyme is being consumed, not true. Okay. And then the reactants will always have more energy than the products because think about before you run a race, you have more energy than afterwards. Okay. Um, we're looking for an inference. So remember an observation is things that you can, um, you use your senses for, and then an inference, like a guess you're using your senses to then make a guess on something that's happening. So plant seeds have different shapes. That's an observation. Um, maple seeds have membrane like extension. That's also an observation. Short peg like extensions. That's an observation. Milkweed seeds are dispersed by wind. That is an inference. The correct answer is B. Okay, so the weak hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases of DNA is what allows for the base pairs to separate during transcription and translation or replication. Oh, brain. So we want those bonds to be weak so that they can separate. Okay, and then what organism, which of these is likely to result in a change to the current classification? This would be linking an organism to different ancestors through DNA sequencing. Okay, anything that's a similar physical trait, or maybe you saw something that was extinct or observing something might lead to additional information, but definitely linking ancestors through DNA sequen sequencing, that is you are finding a fact. It's not just an observation or an inference. It's not your opinion. It is like, okay, we officially noted this. Okay, so then we have classifying organisms by their metabolic strategies. Autotroph is they make their own food. Heterotrophs is they cannot make their own food. And both is something that's classified on each side. So automatically, fern and ferns and grasses are autotrophs. Think about plants, okay? And then yeast and paramecium, they feed on others, okay? So there are heterotrophs. And euglena, 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 weird word. Bacteria and stuff is always so hard to pronounce in fungi. So this has both. They are autotrophs and heterotrophs. Plants are always autotrophic. Animals are always heterotrophic. Good way to attack this type of problem. All right, so different species of frogs have non five non-overlapping ranges. Why is this? This would be classic geographic isolation. If it's the same species and they live in five separate areas, there must be a reason why those frogs in those areas cannot breed with each other, whether it's a mountain or a river or a lake or something like that. They are geographically isolated from one another. Okay, ooh, this should look familiar. Right away, you should think chloroplast, you should think plants, you should think photosynthesis. Okay, so we are looking for the substance that's represented by Y. Um, if you think about what goes into photosynthesis, we know that, of course, light goes into photosynthesis. Um, <coughs> and carbon dioxide would be X, okay? And then it gives us glucose and oxygen, which is then used in cellular respiration to produce ATP. So the correct answer is glucose. Here is the halfway point. This was question 20. Feel free to pause, take a break, that sort of a thing. Okay, here we are. We are moving on to question 21. We, there are actually 46 questions instead of 40, so my bad. We're a little less than halfway through. Let's keep on cruising. All right, investigation of Robbins. We want to look at what her hypothesis would be. So a student notices, that's not really a hypothesis. She thinks that some robins might migrate during the winter. That, that well, it is the correct answer, so that's a hypothesis. She counts robins in her yard once a week for two years. That would be her procedure. Her research has shown that these were her results. So her hypothesis is B. So we're looking at seaweed. What question would best help a student identify the role of seaweeds? This would be A, which organisms depend on seaweeds? 
which seaweed species produces a great amount of oxygen. Only talking about seaweed, so B is not the answer. Um, C is also only talking about seaweed, so that's not good. And same with D. So if we're looking at the role of seaweeds in an ecosystem, we're looking at, at what other organisms interact with seaweeds. So then we have percentage of adenine and DNA, adenine goes to thymine, cytosine to guanine, apples in the tree, cars in the garage. This proved the invaluable to the eventual discovery of which aspect this is the structure. Anytime you have Shargoff, Shargoff's rules, um, A to T, C to G, that involves the structure of DNA because those nitrogenous bases are what hold DNA together. So then we are looking at um, study of embryos, help in the classification by providing clues about the, well, if you're looking at embryos, you are looking at common ancestry. So if you're looking at how things exist in the womb, we're looking for common ancestry. All right, a water molecule is ding, 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 polar. Water molecule is polar. This has a slightly negative charge on the oxygen, positive charge on the two hydrogen atoms. So how I would approach this problem is, okay, water is always polar, right? And then it's like, oh, I can't really remember if the oxygen or the hydrogen is negative or positive. So we're going to skip those two, these three, because we're not sure which one, but it says of the two blank atoms. So we know that water is H2O, so there's two hydrogen atoms. So this one goes to hydrogen, um, so that means this one goes to oxygen, okay? And then um, think about you always want to be more positive than negative, and there are more positive atoms in a water molecule than there are negative atoms. That's how I remember. All right, fungi and plants. We kind of already talked about this one. They both have cell walls, except fungi have chitin in their cell walls and plants have cellulose in their cell walls. Okay, so this is a dissolved oxygen probe. This is a classic just test taking question because um, you might not know what a dissolved oxygen probe does um, or why you would use it and that's okay. You don't have to know that to answer this question. <clears throat> um, so any type of tool or technology is going to be used to help gather most accurate data. You'll use that data to analyze results after you've created a model and to test a hypothesis. But ultimately, this dissolved oxygen probe, any technology specifically mentioned, is going to be used to gather the most accurate data possible. Okay, so we have 120 oak trees, 25% of the population um, has oak wilt disease. What number, um, what's the number of trees in this population that will have oak wilt? So, so the answer to this problem is 30, and I'm going to walk you through how I got there. So we have, we're looking for what is 25% of 120. So 25 over 120 equals x over, um, or I'm sorry, 25 over 100 equals x over 120 because 25 over 100 is 25%. So that means we would multiply 120 times 25 and then divide that number by 100 and that's how you get 30. This would be a good time to bring out Desmos. I just did not think about that as soon as I should have. All right, we're going to keep on rolling. So we have an insect introduced, feeds on nutrients in a hemlock tree, which kills the tree, which kind of data would help a student evaluate the effect of this insect. That would be the information about the ecosystem's characteristics before the infestation. So you want to compare um, the ecosystem before and after whatever has been introduced to see what kind of effect that introduction had on the species. So then here we go, which procedure should have been performed to prevent error? So 
This is both groups should have been tested in the same soil and the same humidity level. You want to make sure that whatever you're comparing, you have a control with as well. So everything that you're looking at needs to be tested in the same humidity level. Unless you want to test humidity level, then everything else has to be the same. Only test one variable at a time if they're related. <coughs> oh, excuse me. All right, sudden decrease in the number of bacteria in the soil would most likely result in a reduction in the amount of nitrogen available in the ecosystem. Okay, so this would not do anything with the fossils. This wouldn't have anything to do with precipitation or um, with water pollution, really. Um, the bacteria perform the night they process and produce nitrogen for us. So less bacteria, less nitrogen available. All right, we are using recombinant DNA technology for veterinarians. The use of this DNA technology will result in making more treatments available for pets. So I don't really know why they introduced veterinarians in this question, maybe just to switch it up. Um, but just like with humans, using recombinant DNA technology for vaccines and treatments and things like that, it will help pets as well. So then we have flow of information from the cell nucleus to the ribosome. If you remember the central dogma, it goes from DNA to RNA to protein. Okay. And so this is the mRNA molecule. DNA is in the nucleus and we want the proteins at the end. So we know it's not A or D, it's the mRNA molecule or messenger RNA that transfers that information. All right, we want to look at the genus and species of this organism. All right, sweet. Dichotomous key, here we go. Antenna with rounded tips or pointed tips. These aren't very pointy, so we're gonna go to two. Wings with stripes, wings without stripes. So these do, they do have, uh, yeah, I would say they have stripes. Yes. So we're going to go to four. Wings with tail-like extensions, shorter than antenna. Wings with tail-like extensions, longer than antenna. So it's these little guys. Are they longer? They are longer than antenna. So the correct answer is your Eurytides marcellus. Okay, we just kind of went through all the different options, figured out what, which descriptions matched the picture. Okay, um, so when the circulatory system increases blood flow to help them stay cool, um, or to help them during cold nights. This is a perfect example of homeostasis. Osmosis is done on the cellular molecular level. Um, homeostasis is the process your body goes through to keep your body in a stable environment so that you survive. So proteins are super diverse because of the different amino acids excuse me, that can be connected into many sequences. So they usually are held by the same bonds, um, phos same phosphate groups, the, um, <coughs> they're linked together, but they're in different sequences and that's what makes them unique. Activity that increases genetic variation, this would be sexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction increases genetic variation and then we have structural differences are due to different sets of genes are expressed at different stages. So basically um, that is the main difference. It's not availability of food. You're not gonna have more tadpoles than adult frogs because of what food is available. The DNA, the type of DNA present is the same throughout. Again, it's just different sets of genes are expressed. All right, so now we have our experiment. The best alternative explanation of the differences between setups is, let's look at the differences. We have one light, we have gas, water. Oh, okay, so there's gas in here, there's water in here. Water is good, okay. Allodia plants, okay. So the best answer for this, oh no, I hate when 
does this is that light caused the Elodia plants to photosynthesize, releasing gas. So basically what this question or what this answer choice gives you is um, an answer to both of the missing, um, both of the differences in the setups. One has light, one doesn't. One has gas, one doesn't. This question addresses the oxygen gas and the light. Um, and so that is key. And so A would not be a good option. B, also not a good option. C and D, um, excuse me, both address the light and the gas. So that's good. Um, but as we know that um, light cause help helps plants photosynthesize. I don't know why my words are scrambling. So sorry. We're, we're persevering, moving through. Okay, let's keep on going. Ooh, okay. We've got more constants and independent variable and dependent variables. Remember your constants are whatever stays the same. So looking at this, we are going to have water, starch, and enzyme amylase are going to be our constants. Remember our dependent variable depends on the independent variable. So the fractional activity is what's going to depend on the temperature. And we can see that from um, our title as well, effect of independent variable on dependent variable. So scientists classifying modern animals are most likely to compare the sequence of the animal's DNA. All bones have similar um, composition Function of animals' limbs might be similar, but this does not mean that they are related. We've talked about that. And even the structure of the ATP. That seems like a weird answer choice. Definitely sequence of the animal's DNA. What features do viruses have in common? They do have a genetic code. Okay, they do have a genetic code. They have DNA or RNA. All right, model of this, here we go. Each with, according to this diagram, the result of spermatogenesis is four cells with, we're looking at, you could know this by um, the process of meiosis, or you can even just count. We have um, two, these are halved right here. So half of the number of chromosomes, haploid cells have half the number of chromosomes. Okay. Half number of chromosomes, haploid, half. I wish this thing at the bottom would go away. Ooh, ponies living at Chincoteague. The development of longer legs would be selected for if it increased the survival rate. Okay. We want to select for traits that help survival. So then one heterozygous, homozygous dominant, what's the percent chance that an offspring from this cross will be heterozygous? This is 50%. Because if you have big D and little d, big D, big D, you will have two big Ds, two homozygous dominants, and two heterozygous. All right, which trial has questionable data? So we're looking at any one of the trials that looks really different, maybe doesn't super make sense, has some fluctuations. That would be Z. This one is different than all of the other ones. We've got 17, it's got the highest. Um, we have, yeah, yeah, this one just automatically, my mind went to, 17, something's wrong with that one, okay? If you see something that's out of the ordinary, potentially um, questionable data due to some sort of error. Is that the end? That's the end, humans, we are done. Congratulations, thank you for staying with me this long. Again, apologies for some mixed words. Y'all are killing it. You're going to crush this SOL. You can do it. I believe in you.